Hello guys, welcome to our channel CSA Concepts with Parinta. So guys, today we are going to learn a very important topic of compiler that is data flow analysis. So in our previous videos, we have learned about code optimization, right? I have already told you about two different types of code optimizations that is local optimization and global optimization. At that time, I have told you that one of the important optimization techniques that comes under global optimization is this one data flow analysis fine so data flow analysis is one of the techniques that helps us in global optimization of our code so in this video i am going to explain in detail that what is data flow analysis what are the basic terminologies of data flow analysis and i will also tell you different data flow properties like available expression reaching definition and i will explain you all these things in very detail with the help of example to make the things very much clear to you fine before starting the video if you are new to the channel then please subscribe the channel and if you like my videos then please hit the like button and let me know in the comment section because these things are something that gives me motivation to make more and more content for you so guys first of all let's see what is data flow analysis so data flow analysis is an analysis that determines the information regarding the definition and use of data in program. So very simple as the name itself indicates data flow analysis. So it is telling us about the flow of data, right? So data flow analysis is an analysis that determines the information regarding the definition and use of data in our program, fine? With the help of this, that means with the help of data flow analysis, global optimization can be done as I have told you. Okay, now before moving forward, you must know some of the important terminologies related to data flow analysis. Now, what happens in data flow analysis that in our whole code we are having uh, various data data means we are having variables we are assigning the values to the variables so in data flow analysis first of all what we will do is we will like this we will make a flow graph fine whatever data is present in our code based on the definition and usage of data we will make one flow and whenever we are making the flow there are various points that we can determine in data flow graph like definition point reference point evolution point etc so you must know that what are these points and how we can recognize them so in this kind of data flow graph whenever you are having any block where you are defining any variable like here what we have done we have defined the variable a and we are assigning the value 2 to the variable so a equal to 2 what is this this is the definition point fine similarly after defining a if we are taking the reference of a to another variable b this is known as reference point because a variable is already there we have already defined the value of a as 2 and now we are taking the reference of this a to the variable b so this b equal to a is actually our reference point Similarly, we are having evolution point. What is evolution point? The point where we are evaluating any expression. We are doing multiplication, division, um, addition, subtraction, anything. Like here what we are having z equal to x into y. So this is one equation. We are evaluating this equation in this step or in this level. So it is known as evolution point. Fine. So in data flow analysis, you must be knowing what is definition point, reference point and evolution point because these are the basic terminologies of data flow analysis. Fine. Now, uh, we are having certain data flow properties. Now, the two main data flow properties are available expression and reaching definition. Now, what are these two? Again, let's see with the help of examples. Now, what is available expression? Any expression a plus b is said to be available at a program point x. Got it? a plus b is a reference example, simple example we, have, we are taking, any example of expression. And let's say there is any point in our program that is x. Fine. So that 
any expression a plus b is said to be available at a program point x when we can say that if none of the operands gets modified before they are used it is used to eliminate common sub expressions so this is again one important point it can be asked in your mcq exam or um, like in the exams like gate or any if you are preparing for any such competitive exams this small small things are very important that this available expression in data flow analysis can be used to eliminate common sub expressions fine so how we can say that any um, expression is available at any point how we can determine that if it is available or not so any expression a plus b is said to be available at a program point x if none of the operands gets modified before they are used so unless and until any operand from that expression is modified we can say that that expression is available at that particular program point x fine let's say let's see here we are having one example let's say we are having three blocks fine block number b1 b2 and b3 so let's say b1 is having l1 equal to in b1 we are having l1 equal to 4 into i in b2 we are having y is equal to x plus l1 and in block b3 we are having p is equal to this l1 into 3 fine so here we can say that l1 this variable l1 that is used in these two also so we can say that this l1 that is 4 cross i this expression is available for block b2 and b3 because as shown in the definition here b1 we have defined b1 l1 equal to b star i and this l1 it is, is directly used by the block b2 and b3 and nothing in between is modifying l1 fine this expression is not modified by any other block so simply we can say that that's why b2 block and b3 block can directly access this variable and uh, this expression and so we can say that the expression that is l1 equal to 4 cross i this expression is available expression for both the blocks b2 as well as b3 fine similarly one more important properties of data flow graph is reaching definition fine so again let's see that also with the help of example what is reaching definition um a definition d see in available expression we were having only blocks b1 b2 b3 in our example but if you see here in the example of blocks we are also having d1 d2 d3 definition fine d1 d2 d3 are signifying three definitions so what is reaching definition a definition d is reaching to a point x if d is neither killed nor redefined before that point simple it is used in constant or variable propagation so again one important point is available expression was used in used to eliminate common sub expressions whereas reaching definition is used in constant propagation or variable propagation fine this was one point and the second point is when we can say that any definition d is reaching any point so a definition d is reaching any point x if d is neither killed nor redefined before that point fine so if any definition is neither killed nor redefined we can say that it is reaching so see we have taken a very good example here uh, it will clear all your doubts in the block b1 we are having a definition d1 that is having x equal to 4 then we are having in block 2 definition d2 that is x equal to x plus 2 then in block b3 we are having definition d3 where we are having y equal to x plus 2 fine so here three blocks are there and the three blocks are having three definitions now if the question is asked to you that the definition d1 is reaching definition for which block so how you can answer it d1 is reaching definition for b2 yes for b2 it is reaching definition but not for b3 not for b3 that means for this definition d1 is reaching for b2 but not reaching for b3 what is the reason since it is killed by d2 
got it try to understand it very nicely see definition d1 is saying that x equal to 4 now definition d2 what it is saying that x equal to x plus 2 now what is this x this x is taking the reference of this x fine this x is taking the reference of d1 that means we can say that d1 is reaching definition for b2 yes but if we talk about b3, b3 is having y equal to x plus 2. So when we are talking about this x, this x is not taking reference from d1. But this x will be taking the reference from this d2 because this is the immediate change that happened. So this x is actually taking the reference of b2. Now b2 or this definition d2 has already modified the value of x. And that's why that means what before coming to d3, the value of x that is present in d1 is already modified that's why we can say that see if we if i give you the conclusion of these three definitions so we can say that d1 is reaching definition for d2 but it is not the reaching definition for d3 if you talk about d2 so d2 is the reaching definition for d3 got it d2 is the reaching definition for d3 d1 is the reaching definition for d2 but d1 is not the reaching definition for d3 because before reaching to d3 x is already modified by d2 and it is already told that if it is killed or modified or redefined by some other definition then it won't be reaching so similarly d2 is already modifying the value of x and so d1 is not the reaching definition for d3 fine so, with the help of these examples, I hope this whole topic of data flow analysis is now very clear to you. In case you still have any doubt, you can always ask me in the comment section. And if you liked the video and you found it helpful, please give it a like button and please share it with all your friends and classmates. Thank you so much.